few days ago, Herbert and I made a video about BYD's new factory, new battery, new charging system, all that stuff. And of course it ruffled a lot of feathers. So we're going to address some of the comments specifically. I'm going to address them and we're going to explain why this is actually a real thing, why this looks as promising as it probably is going to be and what it all means. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. So this was the video, uh, yeah, where we discussed it and let's just uh, get into what it all means. This is, of course, it's a value proposition. Just as much as the Tesla supercharger, one could argue that if you have a home charger, you don't need the supercharger network either. This is a very good point. You see, what good is charging a car in five minutes if you don't need to? If you have home charging, you never go on road trips, what difference does it make? Well, what if it takes 10 minutes? Isn't that almost as good? Yes, better is better. We'll take what we can get. But for most drivers, most of the time, the speed of the charge doesn't really matter. If Tesla was announcing a five minute charger, the title would be game over. But if BYD is doing it, it is not such an advantage. There's a lot of effort here to keep saying that Tesla does not need to fear anything. China is coming fast in all directions. I love Tesla, but I am not blind. Be aware, the worshipers of Elon may miss something on their analysis. This is true. This is all correct. Um, I don't know what the title would be. I don't actually write the titles or thumbnails. I suggest them. The editor does what we have to do. People will sometimes complain. Oh, that was clickbait. How dare you, sir? Hey, when we did the supercut of the all hands meeting the other day, I required it to have a title of something like uh, Elon all hands on deck meeting 30 minute supercut. And we published it that way and nobody watched it. I mean, nobody. So I said, all right, you win, put in whatever title you think works. And he did. And then people watched it. So it's human nature. Uh, but to the point, this is all true. But let's get on to the actual point you were making, which is that uh, these are, is this a big deal? I'd say it is. I'd say everyone charging faster is a big deal. I'd say if your competition can charge faster than you, you should pay attention. And I would say that since BYD is not going to be selling cars in the US anytime soon, it is not game over. And even if they were able to sell them, even if people wanted these and were willing to pay the premium to get them, it still wouldn't be game over because there are already cars that charge faster than Tesla's in the US and it's not game over. The BYD battery on paper is impressive. However, like so many technical breakthroughs, there's normally no free lunch. Correct. When I examine any new system, I apply a three check mark rule. Is it technically feasible? Is it operationally feasible? And is it financially feasible? Smart. My guess, and it's only that at this point, is that the new battery, at least in part, will violate checks two and three. Let's talk about it. Part two, is it operationally feasible? I'm not sure what you mean. BYD doesn't make announcements willy nilly. They go with reality. So I would say that if BYD is announcing it, it is real and it is coming. We believe this is coming out in like a month or two. This will be out very soon. Is it financially feasible? Now, actually, and operationally, you might mean the chargers themselves. Well, you know, if there's only a handful today, that doesn't mean there won't be thousands tomorrow or in a year or five. It's nice to future proof your vehicles in that way. Is it financially feasible? Aha, that's the better question. These are only being offered on their most expensive, most premium cars, which would suggest that it does have a higher cost and or shorter lifespan. Maybe these will wear out during the warranty period. I don't think so, but I will address that later in the video. Fast charging is fantastic. There's always a trade off. My guess would be that the number of cycles is greatly reduced. There it is. Very good, Rich. Yes, but from what to what? These are LFP batteries. BYD is the LFP king. LFP chemistry offers considerably longer cycle times than other non -lith uh, other lithium ion chemistries. Under normal circumstances, it supports more than 3,000 cycles. Under optimal conditions, it supports more than 10,000 cycles. But even that low number is substantially higher than what you would get from an NMC, a nickel, manganese, cobalt battery, like you would find in a Tesla Model 3 or Y made and sold in the US. So that means if the Tesla battery is good for 100,000 miles, and it's not, it's more like 150, 200 now, they're quite good, that the BYD battery made to the same sorts of exacting standards, BYD is a global leader in batteries, that they would 
have a 150, 200, 400,000 mile battery. LFP is famous. It can go a million. It can go 4 million. This is not just in the lab. This is real life. So what if you take a million mile battery and reduce its lifespan by half? That's still a half million miles. Very few cars drive over 300,000 miles. I know I always get people in the comments saying, I had a, an old whatever that did that. Yes, but it's very, very rare. Those cars go on auto trader search nationwide over 200,000, I think is the highest number you can put in. Maybe it's 150,000 and you'll find that there are literally dozens of cars with that many miles available very rare. So yes, you could drastically shorten the life, but on an LFP battery, it might not matter. Please don't get too excited. A five minute charger that requires a megawatt of power is equal to supplying electricity to about a thousand homes. And the size of a one megawatt transformer is the size of a small shed. The transformer size isn't the issue so much as availability and cost. Those are going to be challenges. Um, Getting the power to the location is definitely a consideration. One of the other comments along this theme was that that's more power to charge one car. It'd be more power than I have in my whole little residential neighborhood. Yes, but we're not going to be charging. No one's charging these in residential neighborhoods like that. This would be out at the highway. This would be out somewhere where there is power because you don't typically build gas stations in, in residential neighborhoods. Um, some exceptions apply, of course, but this would be for that. You can still charge it normally at home. And in terms of the people thinking we don't have enough power to charge at home, we do. There's a reason they don't tell you on Thanksgiving, be careful. Do not cook your turkey at the same time as your neighbor or we will run out of power. Everyone's running their oven for hours. Full blast, doesn't matter. Okay, maybe not full blast, but pretty high. Cuber said... You may not need to have a megawatt charger to reap the benefit from a high C battery, C being the charge rate. Imagine if it just let you have a flat 250 kilowatt curve through 80 or 90% charge. It'd be huge. And also if the battery could sustain the higher charge for longer, a larger pack might be worthwhile to have. So what he's talking about here is um, if you check the speed, when you first plug in, you're getting real, real high numbers here. The You're seeing, you know, a lot of cars over 100 kilowatts that they're able to take. But it starts stepping down pretty quickly. And it does that because as the battery fills, you want to charge it more slowly. Well, if this battery can accept a very high rate of charge, that means you could start at 250 and leave it at 250. Who knows, all the way up to 80%. That would get you all from from 10 to 80 i mean in really a matter of minutes so it would be much much faster than what we're doing now which is starting off real nice and hot and then faltering thereafter very good point Cuber. appreciate it see you thursday or friday the five minute charge would be great for the taxi and bus market imagine all the taxis in nyc with no fumes we don't need a faster battery and we don't need a faster charge Cities like Shanghai have already gone all electric, Beijing as well. They can do it. As long as your range exceeds the amount of mileage that you're expecting to do during peak hours, you're fine. You're done. You're good to go. Because as many taxis as there are that operate 24-7, they don't all do it. In the middle of the night, not very many taxis, not very many cars, not very many people. So you charge when you can. And even if you need to charge for 15 minutes in the afternoon, do it while you're taking your break. Well, I, I take my break in the car. Okay. Don't poop in the car is my advice on that is what I would say. Musk isn't laughing at BYD anymore. He who laughs last. Uh, correct. And there were some sentiments along these lines. For those who don't know, Elon had laughed at BYD. What a joke. What a joke of a company. For context, that was in 2011. And BYD was a joke. This video is taken in 2011, does not reflect his current views. What are his current views? Uh, he says that was many years ago. Their cars are highly competitive these days. And he's made that pretty clear. BYD in 2011 was selling just about nothing in terms of automobiles. They had this guy, which had come out in 2009. 
but it didn't actually come out until October of 2021 of 2012, 2011. But it didn't actually come out until October of 2011. And that's two years. It was only available to fleet customers. They had planned to sell it uh, for 35,000 um, before incentives. It ended up costing more like 50 or 60,000, 52, uh, 52,000. And what did you get? Uh, zero to 60 in eight seconds, 62 miles of range, a top speed of 100 miles an hour, and very slow charging, very slow charging. I guess the range it says is 186 miles, still quite anemic, and that's on the WLTP rating, uh, so not great. Oh, I see. This was power consumption. The range is 186 miles WLTP, probably a 150 mile range car for 52 grand. That's not good. So BYD, not a joke anymore, but Tesla knows that. Do others know it? Tesla would also be in debt if it didn't have 38 billion in government subsidies. Uh, Robert, put your winky away. This is not what we're doing. Uh, let's look at that. I'm not even going to click on these clickbait articles. Elon Musk business empire is built on 38 billion in government contracts. So wait, wait, wait. Musk and his businesses. Oh, so we're including SpaceX. Gotcha. Has have received at least 38 billion in government contracts. So you go out to bid and the lowest bidder is SpaceX. That's not free money. That's being paid to do a job. The gentleman who works for the parks department who cuts down trees is not a moocher. He's doing a job. He was paid by the city to work on the trees. He is an employee at yeah, government contracts. You have to be the lowest bidder. Why don't we take the amount of money that the government has saved by paying 30 to 70% less for those contracts, government contracts, loans, way to tick loans. Oh, you mean that loan define that loan that was paid back with interest early and had a prepayment penalty on it. Those kinds of loans, the government made money on those. That money was not free. Subsidies and tax credits. I'm not sure which subsidies, um, unless you mean the ones that go to the buyers of the vehicles, because Tesla doesn't receive those. You receive those. These are things that are available to everyone, to every company. I can bid on the next launch uh, offering, the next launch contract. I can do that. I'm not going to because they would discard my bid because I don't have a rocket. But I could bid on other things. I can bid on chargers. Tesla was the third largest recipient of the highway charging infrastructure dollars because they bid on projects and got them. So that's tired. Let it go. Tesla is alive because of the tariffs. Otherwise, it would be demolished like other car makers. This dude does not know a thing. If by this dude you mean yourself, Joe, then correct. This dude doesn't know a thing. Um... You know, Tesla operates in many countries where there is an even footing for tariffs, or in some cases, Tesla may be at a tariff disadvantage over, over domestic producers. So what that means is no, it means no, it means you're wrong. And it will be demolished like other car makers. Which ones, my friend? Which car makers have been demolished? I would appreciate that information. It's not Tesla that should be worried by the growth of BYD. It's Toyota, GM, VW, Daimler, Honda, Hyundai. They are worried. Trust me. I do trust you. If they're not worried about BYD and Xiaomi and Lee and to a lesser extent, Neo, who uh, at this point might as well power their cars on burning cash, but instead of electricity, but hey, you do you. It, they know. They know that this is coming. In the U.S., automakers have this complacency because they believe that the current administration is going to make it smooth sailing forever. Well, it's not forever presidents change from time to time. And uh, you never know when the next guy is going to say, hey, the rest of the world is on board. We should be too. Great point. Good way to pin a value on fast charging. I'd said that. Would you pay extra to charge faster? Would you pay five grand extra? Would you pay 20 grand extra? I wouldn't. For myself, I wouldn't pay 5000 for a five minute versus 15 minute, 40 minute worst case charging. Unless I 
maybe if it would add that much in resale when it's sold, but probably not even then. Same boat, same boat. If it's if it costs the same to get a fast charge, I'll take it. But if it costs extra, we got to have a conversation. And that's where we're at. That's where BYD is at. That's why BYD is not offering this on all cars, just on the most premium cars. Herbert is a Tesla fanboy and possibly a paid Tesla promoter. Stop. Stop. Both sides of you guys, stop. Everyone you don't like is paid. Stop. I see this about the protesters. They're all paid to be there. No, there are people who just like to protest. There are people who feel strongly. I saw this during every protest ever. Oh, everyone there is a paid actor. Why? Uh, and then, of course, the flip side is they all assume that because they believe that's what we're saying about them, that we must be the paid promoters. Herbert is not a paid promoter. I am not a paid promoter. I don't even get into events. Herbert's gotten into one since having his channel, I think. Yeah, one. Uh, so stop. Just don't be so gosh darn silly is what I'm trying to say without losing my mind. I seriously hope that you're actually trying to come off as hyper effeminate in that thumbnail. Well, I uh, have good news for you. I am entirely confident in my masculinity. I don't need it, uh, but I exude it to such an extent that it's making you question your life decisions. And that's fine. No judgment, man. You do you. Um, I'm not interested. Thank you, though. But uh, best of luck. I'm sure your family will understand. I imagine you're the type of person who um, has always been kind and generous about such things to others in the past. Nobody cares about someone else's sexuality. And if they do, they are an absolute weirdo. Don't be a weirdo. It's very easy. It's like free. As long as Tesla, Elon is in Tesla, I don't care. I am out. Okay. This isn't about you then. Ah, so a Tesla fanboy video. I love these because in the same day, I will be called a Tesla fanboy and an anti-Tesla fanboy. How dare you be such a hater? Uh, these videos about BYD, I get told I am, it is pro-China propaganda, how dare you? And also, what, so every channel in the US now has to hate China? Guys, if both of you are saying both things on the same video, odds are you're the fringe and everyone in the middle seems like the other fringe because that's how far off the absolute deep end you have gone. Very, very exhausting dealing with those kinds of people. Uh, hey, uh, if you want to support the channel, you can do that. It, uh, a bunch of ways you can do it. Uh, those are the ones where you get bonus content, which I've been putting out almost every day. You can't do it every day. I do it when I can. Got some travel coming up this week. I'm going to go into the Chattanooga charge in Tennessee, where I will be visiting with all of my good Tesla friends and perhaps you. Uh, but while I'm in transit, I mean, come on. So everybody else, like, subscribe, do all the things you do, hit the thumbs, either one, doesn't matter, and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity-flop.